Hi, small birds. Small birds are a challenge to photograph, just like birds in flight. A few weeks ago, I uploaded a video about how you can get pictures of birds of flight. Today, I will show you how you can get good pictures of small birds. Small birds are a challenge. Small birds are very fast. They are very shy. They jump from one branch to another branch. They are hide in the bushes and they are almost never still in a place to take a good pictures. I'm talking about blue tits, sparrows, cardinals, all these very little small birds. In this video, I will show you what I do and with techniques and setups I use to take the best pictures of small birds. If you want to know more, maybe you consider to subscribe so you will not miss any other of my videos. Now, let's prepare the things and go out to take pictures. Hi, I'm Mario Killian and welcome back to another video. So, the first thing to consider is that this bird moves very fast and are very shy birds. So, the major enemy we will have is the motion blur. Of course, as I told you in videos before, we have two kinds of motion blur. The one of the object that is moving meanwhile we're taking the picture and the other is the shaking of the camera. In this case, I want to minimize the shaking of the camera. Therefore, I bring with me this heavy-duty tripod so I can have the camera as much as stabilized as I need. The goal is to try to shoot with a shutter speed with 1 over 500, even it could be less. And why? Because I don't have nice light conditions and this objective, it is the Sigma, his widest aperture is f6.3. So, if I can shoot with a lower shadow speed, I will get really sharp pictures of this bird. The second point is to know that these birds are very shy. Therefore, the best is to get as high as possible you can. If you have these camouflage tents to hide between the bushes, this will be the best. In my case, I use these caps to hide the camera and of course a camouflage dress so that birds will not see me. And a very important thing is the patience. Maybe you can get to the place and have to wait for more than an hour, more than two hours before the birds will came back to the place where there was. And when you walk to the birds, you have to walk very slowly. And the best is with the wind towards you so that they don't smell you, they don't hear you. It's a very slight movement to the place where you think the birds can be. Once you arrive to the place and the birds flow all away, you have to stay there and wait. They will come back in any moment. And therefore, patience is a key factor. But not only motion blur and light will be an issue. One important thing is to, oh, the sun is coming out. Great. One important thing is to consider the background you will have when you take the picture. The best is to choose an open area with some trees where you are sure the birds can take a rest over these branches. If you choose a too closed area, too dense area, you only will get a, a bird between the branches and that's not a good picture so choose a place like this but not a place like this and stay there a good idea is to bring with you some seeds you can bring some seeds and put them anywhere over the trees over the leaves and the branches and that will make that the birds came and there is a perfect chance to get good pictures The next point to consider taking good pictures is always try to take the pictures at eye level of the bird. If you take pictures from the bird or in the top of the tree, 
that makes no sense. That will be not a good picture. You will only see the belly of the birds. So always try to reach the eye level of the bird. If you see a bird a little bit higher, you can get away with your camera and so decrease the angle where you are taking the picture of the birds. And that may be a good solution to have a good picture too. It's already important if you find a good location to know what kind of birds you will find there. Some small birds prefer to be in the lower part of the trees and others prefer to be in the top of the trees. For example, brains, blue tits, cold tits, they love to be here in the lower part of the trees. But cardinals, sparrows, woodpeckers, they mainly are in the top of the trees and that's more difficult to get good pictures. So consider what kind of birds you will go out to shoot. It will make it easy. In the morning, I had rain. Just a few hours later, the sun came out for one hour. And now it's getting cloudy again and I have a good chance that it will be rain again. But if I will wait for a good sunny day, I know that the next sunny day will be next year in April. So, what else can we do? Just wait after patience. Small birds move fast. And small birds at a distance than more than 20 meters will not be a good picture. They don't will be film the image with the sights they have. So, I have to preset up my Sigma lens so that the lens focus only from a distance from 3 meters to 15 meters. That helps me a lot to increase the speed of the autofocus of this lens. Of course, of course the best image with this lens is about an aperture of f7 to f9. But with these weather conditions and with the shadow speed I need to use, I will only shoot wide open. You can shoot in shutter priority or in manual mode. I shoot in manual mode with auto ISO. That's the best for me to get the best picture. Small birds only covers a little part of the image. So the exposure will mainly be driven by the surrounding of the birds. Therefore, I sometimes use a exposure compensation from plus one to plus two. So I ensure me to have a correct exposure just of this little bird in the image. Sometimes when the bird is too far away and I only have the 600 millimeters of this lens, I choose from the DX, from the FX format to the DX format in the Nikon. That means going from the full format to the cropped format so I can have a good chance to increase the focal length from 600 to about 900 millimeters. And that will help me sometimes when, when the bird is too small or is too far away. It's a good idea to do it. If you have a high megapixel camera, there will be no problem. The best condition to find a good place is if you shoot the bird in the shadow and in the background is the light. That will be a beautiful image, a well-exposed image, and that really good, looks good. I have been already in this position for two hours. I think it's a good, it, it's time to change position. The wind is getting stronger and I'm afraid that some branch can fall down. And we don't want that. To focus on small birds, it's really hard. It's a permanent work to get these little birds in focus. So the best is to use a very small focus area so you can hit 
only the birds and avoid that the autofocus get over anybody, any other thing that is surrounding the bird. And I shoot in burst mode. With my Nikon Z5, it's about five frames per second. And so I can get the perfect moment. It has been a hard day today to get good pictures, but well, let's keep trying. And so, taking pictures of small birds can be really a challenge. More than setup and camera gear is about patience. But, well, I hope you like this video. If so, maybe you consider to subscribe and give it a like, so others can see this video too. Now, go out and take your best pictures of small birds. I know you can, and I hope to see you next week. Bye bye.